good afternoon now we come to another problem that we are now going to face a lot more can i have the slides please yeah with an aging population and the number of hip replacements being done on the rise the incidence of periprosthetic fracture is going to increase and in fact today it's the third most common cause for revision okay these are complex uh, injuries to deal with because of a number of issues you have a femoral component position which will impede your fixation of the proximal fragment you have high stress adjacent especially to the tip of the stem which if you don't realize will result in early failure of your fixation the bone quality is generally poor so getting a good fixation is difficult and most of these are elderly patients with a lot of medical comorbidities who need to be brought onto their feet immediately and hence your fixation has to be good the most important decision when you're dealing with a periprosthetic fracture is to know whether your incumbent or the indwelling uh, stem is loose or well fixed because that will decide how you're going to treat these injuries if it is well fixed and stable then you retain the prosthesis and go ahead and fix the fracture if the stem is loose of course you will have to revise with or without additional fixation clinically the history that the patient gives a clinical examination will give you a clue of whether your stem is loose or well fixed if the stem is obviously loose of course on plain x ray that will be apparent but many times in spite of doing ct scan mri you may still be you know not very sure whether your stem is loose or fixed and in fact the literature says that about 20% of the stems which were thought to be well fixed were found to be loose at the time of surgery so you need to be aware of this and be prepared with a plan b should you be faced with such a situation the vancouver classification all of us know has been widely used with divides into basically 3 a b c that was the original vancouver classification based on the site of the fracture as well as stability of the implant you now have the new comprehensive classification system that has been introduced by the AOOTA which will classify all the periprosthetic fractures in upper limb lower limb so they have given you a roman numeral 1 to 6 based on the joint that has been replaced and the uh, you have numbers 1 2 3 4 which uh, stand for the bones that is fractured so basically in today's talk it will be a 4 3 and then the uh, num uh, letter a to f depending on the vancouver type unless the patient is medically unfit for surgery all these fractures all these injuries should be treated by surgery so that you can get the patient mobile early and lower the risk of mal union or non union coming to the specific fracture type the type a which involves either the lesser trochanter or greater trochanter are generally undisplaced and hence you can treat them conservatively with protected weight bearing unless the displacement is more than 1 cm then you may need open reduction and fixation the type b are the ones which create the most controversy because of your maybe inability to know whether the stem is fixed or not these are further divided into three types the type b1 where your stem is well fixed the type b2 where the stem is loose but your bone mass is good and type 3 where not only is your prosthesis loose but you have got poor bone stock so that a straight forward revision is not possible so coming to the b1 fracture which you know your stem is likely to be well fixed and stable so then you go ahead and proceed with fixing the fracture biological fixation is preferred that you minimize your surgical trauma and your fixation has to be mechanically strong enough to allow them early weight bearing the general principles of fra fixing fractures also apply to this injuries so that if you have a simple fracture pattern you need to go ahead do a direct open reduction if you have a more combination then a bridging construct with mipo techniques absolute stability in these fractures even if you have a very simple fracture pattern like a transfer or a short oblique is very difficult to achieve and hence relative stability is generally the norm any attempt to try and get an absolute stability with rigid fixation will result in stress concentration at the tip of the stem and early failure so whenever you are doing relative stability you can enhance your relative stability especially in fractures which are simple by doing an accurate reduction achieving some compression across the fracture site fixation should be the plate which should be long with well spaced out screws so that you are getting what is known as a compressed lens stable construct 
there are number of fixation techniques that you can use starting from wires with different types of plates or strut allografts biomechanically the plate seems to be the strongest that will give you a good fixation use long plates so that you substitute for the lateral cortex and you can have minimized the risk of a fracture below the implant by preventing any stress concentration screw fixation is thought to be superior to the circlage so what they recommend is at least having eight cortices hold in the distal fragment and four cortices hold in the proximal fragment but with your stem in place sometimes getting screw fixation in the proximal fragment is not as simple especially if you have conventional plates and this results in early failure so now you have newer implants like the locking attachment plates or you have the periprosthetic plates which can allow you to change the trajectory of your screws so that you can get bicortical hold even in the proximal fragment by missing the stem one of the other important determinant in a b1 fracture for the outcome is the integrity of the medial cortex or the medial column you need to be aware if you have medial comminution especially at the tip of the stem then in spite of getting a good reduction and adequate fixation these will fail in virus okay so if you are going to fix these fractures you may need to augment your fixation with a strut allograft medially the other option may be to revise it using a long stem so that the stem itself will act as an internal buttress the other thing when you are going to retain a prosthesis is try to increase the longevity of that hip replacement so if there is any scratching of the head change it change a all worn out liner b2 fractures we know are loose but the bone quality is good so a straight forward revision using all the principles of revision use a long stem to bypass the fracture by two bone diameters here's an example of the b2 a b3 where your unstable prosthesis and your bone stock is inadequate so many a times a simple straight forward revision may not be possible you may end up doing a proximal femoral replacement the type c fracture which is well distal to the stem of the implant so your stem stability does not come into account here use internal fixation based on the merit of the fracture extra medullary fixation with a plate is preferred make sure you have a long enough plate so that you overlap the distal part of the stem so as not to create any stress rises interprosthetic fractures are now we are seeing a lot more where the hip and knee has been replaced again the same principle if your implants are stable make sure you have a long enough plate which covers the entire length of the femur with well spaced out screws bone grafts can be useful especially if you are going to use a cortical strut graft which will not only improve the stability of your construct but also restore the bone stock complications are high so you need to warn your patients that these are not simple injuries they will have some degree of complications so to take home periprosthetic fractures are a growing epidemic the stability of the prosthesis will dictate your treatment if the prosthesis is stable fix it if your prosthesis is loose revise it or whatever you do make sure that you get your patient mobilized early with immediate weight bearing thank you mm -hmm.